G'day fellas and welcome to a build order breakdown for the Byzantines. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a build order by Don Artie, who's one of the best players in the world, currently sitting inside the top 20, a Conqueror 3 player through and through. This guy has come up with a great build order that works as an aggressive opening, but still allows you to get to Castle Age and takes advantage of all the things you want to be taking advantage of with the Byzantines. It's also a basic build order, which means that you don't have to have amazing control or amazing mechanics to take advantage of this, nor do you need to have a solid understanding of the Byzantines or a PhD for this civilization early on or for this strategy early on. So let's get to it and take a look at exactly what Don does. Starting off, all of the villagers are going to move to berries, but one of them will peel off and throw down assistant. All of them are going to be working on building this first mill. He's going to start queuing up villagers in the town center, rallying out the first one towards berries. He wants to go up to a total of six villagers on berries early on. He will eventually add in a seventh one as well, but we'll focus on that when he gets to it. And looking to scout out on the map and pick up sheep wherever he can. Keep in mind that the Byzantines, because they do start on berries, they've got these sheep back here available. And it means that he doesn't need to run back to his town center to drop off any sheep because he's going to have these sheep ready to go for quite a while because of the berries. Once you've finished the system, you're then going to be queuing that villager up for a house and then a mining camp and looking to move over onto gold. When it comes to placement of that system, ideally the main focus is berries. If you can get gold, get gold. But just be happy with berries. Berries is, is more than enough. After your first villager has, uh, has come out and gone out onto berries, your second villager will then come onto sheep. And from here, your third villager will go out to gold. So starting off, you, you're kind of, you're hitting two resources, but it's like hitting three different resources because you've got berries and sheep and you've got to juggle them. And this is all very intentional because Don Adi needs to get a specific amount of olive oil. And the sooner he can gather it, the better, just because you want to make sure that you've got everything you need as soon as you hit that feudal age. But now that he's got those six villagers on uh, on berries, he's going to add a second villager in onto sheep. And then after that, a seventh villager will come out over onto berries. So, so far, it's it's pretty simple, right? It's, it's Look, it's not as simple as uh, back in the days, you remember playing the French, eight to food, four to gold, three to wood, make a knight, kill the enemy villagers, win the game. That was pretty much the build order. You didn't even have to do the, the bits in between. I think you maybe had to make a house. That was pretty much it. It's a little bit more complex these days just because we need to make sure we've got the right amount of resources at the right amount of time. Uh, but... So far, this opening, pretty simple. Nine and two villagers. Uh, and the idea here is that we want to try and age up as early as we can. But at the same time, we still want to try and take into account the fact that berries have a slower gather rate than their sheep counterparts do. So now that he's finished off with the seven villagers over on sheep, he's just going to start rallying out over... Or sorry, seven villagers on berries. He's just going to add those villagers onto sheep and keep them in. And now starting to think about where to place that landmark. So... For the Byzantines, it's pretty simple when it comes to placing the landmark. You've got two options, but the one that we're going to be looking at today in the focus for this video is going to be the Hippodrome. I do think this, this landmark is by far the best landmark available in the Feudal Age or to the Feudal Age for the Byzantines. And it is, uh, it's it's exciting to see Donati going for it here. So now, looking to put down that Hippodrome, you want to make sure it's always within the radius of the cistern. And I'm not talking about the Golden Circle. I'm talking about the Golden Square. You guys will be familiar with it. It's the one that's going to allow you to have this little bonus right here on, on each of your buildings. And you can see that Don puts it immediately adjacent to that cistern. Two villagers from gold, two villagers from food. And now begins the transition. So three villagers coming over onto wood and rallying out any further villagers out onto wood. Just the seven villagers, once again, over on berries. Now, these guys are going to come off berries as soon as he's got enough olive oil. That's the key here because berries, they're very slow when it comes to gathering for your food. Uh, so we want to make sure that we, we utilize these as little as we need to. That's essentially it. Now, when it comes to this build order by Don, I want to just first and foremost shout him out for it if you haven't already checked him out i'll leave a link in the description to where you can watch him live over on twitch he does plenty of content over there so go and check him out but i would just say that uh, the the reason why i like this build order so much from don is because i've done quite a bit of theory crafting uh behind the scenes uh with a couple of the guys about the byzantines and the best theory that we could come up with as to their potential strategy there's two options both of them are one tc play we don't think this civilization is going to be able to defend a two tc play just simply because it doesn't have the guts uh for defending a an all in aggression uh, all in aggression aggressive aggression uh attack um I, I suspect that players will still look to do two two tcs in in uh in matchups that you can get away with it but in more aggressive matchups it's going to be not impossible and i think that's part of the reason why this is going to be such a great build order for you to get a mastery on because it's going to be suitable in almost every single matchup that you play maybe with like exception of say the mongols or something like that but it's still going to be really good against the mongols 
So now we can see the age up coming through just shy of four minutes 20 lash also aging up his opponent uh, and now that the age ups come through we can see that he immediately drops down the mercenary house here now keep in mind throughout this period he's had plenty of villagers on wood and he's only just started rallying back to food now and what he's going to be looking to do is opening up with that Imperial Hippodrome and looking to get his horsemen out of the map. Keep in mind, he's got Conscriptio going, uh, which is going to increase the production rate of these horsemen. And now going to be looking to align himself with the Western Mercenary Contract, aiming to get out Longbows early on. Now, keep in mind, it's a nice little boost of Longbows you get. It's a group of five, and five Longbows are all you're going to need. Now, you can see he's got just enough olive oil to get those Longbows in and just immediately moves those villagers over off the berries, brings them back into the food because now the focus becomes about getting to Castle Edge. And we can see already the balance of resources. He's got six villagers here over on gold, a handful of villagers over on wood, and then 12 villagers on food at the moment. He's going to keep rallying that in and utilizing those sheep that he's been able to, to gather up throughout this game. So starting off, we see the horseman coming through. Now he's got a couple of options as to when he uses the special ability from the Hippodrome. He can look to try and use Triumph now. And this is good value because already... Early on in this game, he's actually going to just lose this this horseman. Uh, but, but you start off with a lot of stacks of Triumph, and it does regen pretty quickly. So I'm tempted to say, you know, throw, throw it out early on. Uh, but at the same time, the, the timing attack that Don Artie is looking to achieve here is a Castle Age timing attack. So it's better off that you just save Triumph for the specific timing where you actually need it, rather than trying to get the value out of it. So we can see that at this point in time, Don's just made a handful of horsemen. So in total, he's gone up to three horsemen and we see Longbow's now coming out and he's going to be using this to put pressure on his opponent, the Japanese. You can see early on at, at this point, uh, a, a single TC play is occurring and just looking to be defensive with spears. I'm not sure exactly what Lash is up to. We see no stone being taken at, at this point in the game. It looks like a samurai is going to be coming out here. One of the things to note is that with these longbows, you're going to be able to deal effectively with any spears and the horsemen should be able to tank up any of those samurais on the front. Uh, and you can see them actually looking to come through. Uh, one thing to note though is that that deflective armor is definitely going to do quite a bit of work here on the defensive. So you've got to be extra careful about it. And now those longbows coming down to that south side and behind the scenes, just those six villagers on gold, three villagers on wood and every other villager has been rallied over to food now. And now those longbows doing a very decent job of picking off the spears. And we're pretty early into this game, but this is quite a fair bit of units uh, to have out on the field and now able to pick up. He's trained another horseman and we hear another one trained behind the scenes. So going up to a total of five horsemen so far this game and well and truly on the way to castle at this point. He's going to be looking to put pressure on resources at the front of the enemy base. He doesn't want to commit to a fight. Keep that in mind. You ideally want to just force your opponent off these resources. If you can kill villagers, you look to take them, but don't ever commit to a big fight. You don't want to have it. Uh, you just want to try and... and and slowly chip away at the enemy's defenses. So now those horsemen going to come in. Lash looking to evacuate. And Wheelbarrow coming through for Donati. Now, I, I suspect this is only coming through for Donati just because of his macro. So his macro hasn't been perfect this game. If you're going for a Wheelbarrow within, say, the first, like, seven minutes, um, you could probably justify going for it immediately in, in the early game uh, instead of going for it now. Uh, but I think it's just a combination of, of the macro being poor. So I would say... Uh, even though this is a build order breakdown, if you're looking at doing something similar, avoid going for wheelbarrow unless you've got too much gold, in which case, be, be or feel free to pick it up. It just makes total sense if you've got that extra bit of gold floating around. But now that age up, very close to coming in, and you can see the Don's trying his best to pick off those villagers from the, uh, the, the Kura storehouse, I want to say. Yeah, the Kura storehouse. There we go. Drongo getting it right the first time. Not too bad. Behind this, the age up is almost about ready. He's going to do a little bit of a force drop back here. How, how are we doing on it? So the second system has been added in yet to connect it up just yet. But you can see that he doesn't want to engage in a, a permanent fight. Just wants to play around the edges of the base, force the enemy uh, into a bad position. And now we've got that age up coming through. So Don going to be looking to place the system of the first hill down. And that's going to be coming in on the back of the base here. Nice and safe just to make sure that there's no threat of the enemy coming in. And you can see that he's dealing up against the samurai here. He's got to be careful to avoid losing these longbowmen. He really needs to just make sure he runs back to the base with this. And the idea here is that he's going to be using the Cistern of the First Hill and the power spike that it gives his units in the early stages of the Castle Age to to really uh, power home the the power of his units. I, I, it's, it's hard for me to explain it, but essentially he's going to be using the healing bonus from the Cistern uh, to really send these units to the next level. And he's going to have a bit of a struggle here. We can see the Samurai here on the front line doing a wonderful job of just dealing with both of these units. And now Don's heading back towards his base, tail between his legs. Blacksmith's coming online, and the main unit that he's going to be moving towards here is the Cataphract. 
That's why we're going to be calling this the Cataphract Fast Castle. This is Don's special build order for it. Now, the age ups come through. You can see he's lacking a fair bit of resources here. He, he's only got the single hippo drone, but it does have the faster production speed. And on top of that, he is slowly but steadily connecting it out. You can see, I think he must have ran out of stone. And he's only just got the stone in because of the building the landmark and whatnot. Uh, but plenty of villagers here on food is going to mean that he's going to have all of the resources he needs to get these cataphracts out. Because once they are on the field, these units are unkillable. They're literally unkillable. It is, it is not possible to kill them unless you can somehow manage to surround them with spears. Just because if you've got even just the most basic micro, this is going to work out very well for you. So there's two things that are going to be stacking up for Don Adi here in the Castle Age. The first thing is going to be the Cistern of the First Hill, which has got the Flask ability, which increases your health regeneration from 25 uh, or 25 per second for 10 seconds, so it's 250. And on top of that, you've also got Triumph, which increases your uh, health regen by 2 per second. So take that 25 per second and put it up to 27, and then, of course, give you all those background stats that it provides. So our first Cataphract comes out a little bit after the 10-minute mark. Takes quite a while to train these bad boys, but you can see only 24 seconds now, and he's looking to connect in this third system, which is going to further decrease it uh, away from that. And yeah, he's got to be careful not to use the flask on these units. Ideally, you want to be saving your flasks for your high health units because a flask does 250 healing. So ideally, we want to be using it on the cataphract when we get down to, say, maybe 200 health and if we, we've got a lot of units on us. It depends exactly on the timing uh, and, and the way that the fight is going. Uh, but there, there could be an argument to also pre-pop it. But we now see the first of the cataphracts making it out onto the field. Plenty of samurai out here as well. And we can see that the spearmen are going to be looking to defend. I think uh, Lash might be thinking about going to Castle Age himself at this point. And we see a gulp being used and the, the longbowmen instantly healing up to full health back here. I, I don't know if I agree with that. How many how many charges have we got? Uh, I, I don't know how to check how many charges we've got. Uh, actually, if we hover over this. Ooh, only two flasks available at the moment. So yeah, you really want to try and keep those for the cataphracts. Uh, and he's going to be looking at to come in now underneath the base. And just remember, he's, he's balancing his economy around making cataphracts. It's, it's very much all in at this stage of the game because it's about making sure your cataphracts survive, which is quite easy to do. Uh, making sure that they survive. That's the most important thing. And then just healing them up. That's, that's the big thing. And then just adding in more cataphracts and camping underneath the opponent's town center. And that's exactly what Don is looking to do here. At the same time, we start to see him moving out and taking berries. By taking these berries, it's going to mean that he can look to access the next lot or the next set of longbows. He's done a great job in keeping them alive. And the Castle Age does indeed come through from his opponent. He's got a nice little defense here at home and a little bit of damage coming out onto that cataphract. And this is where Don is now looking to tee off. So... His enemy looks to surround him, and we're going to start to see that's Triumph coming through. You'll notice that, with that, that little symbol right there, the gulp, and look at the healing. Look at the healing. He can't kill the cataphract. 170 health, and it just keeps going up behind this. The longbow's picking off all of the spears, and the cataphracts have just got healing for days here. He's got access to another Pilgrim Flask if he wants to use it underneath the town center. Keep in mind, he's also picked up plus one, plus one ranged armor here. And that's going to mean that all of his cavalry is just constantly healing up underneath the town center. He's got the ranged armor, so less damage. And then if anything gets a little bit too close for comfort, he's going to be able to hit that Pilgrim Flask. Now, remember, it does have a cooldown, so you've got to be a little bit careful. But we do start to see the Onomusha coming out, so they're going to be trying their best to deal with this threat underneath the TC. But more Cataphracts come, start to come in, and you can see that this is where it gets difficult to deal with. Oh, gosh, he's got the order. Oh, gosh, this is never a good thing. You can see right here, you want to have that Pilgrim Flask available for your Cataphracts. I think he's got auto uh, auto flask on. Yeah, he does. So, I mean, th this is definitely up to you if you want to if you want to do this. Uh, the one thing I'd just be fearful of is running out of flasks uh, when when you when you realistically can't afford to. But now you can see down on the south side, the cataphract once again was surrounded by villagers, but he's quickly realized he's not going to be able to do it. More cataphracts running underneath the town center, and this is going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. That is the Don Artie build order breakdown. I don't think there's too much more to add from that. It's pretty simple. I'll, I'll just leave it there. It's a basic build order. Behind this, he's just working on uh, throwing out more cataphracts. Very all-in, but a very solid build order. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.